Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 20, Thoughts. This episode's called Farewell, Cruel World. Another episode I love, I suppose, for anything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came, after, came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open 10 days ago, seeing right, what happened right after the, or not very long after, at least, the, um, yeah, Simmons and... Daisy both went into the framework really nicely done with the yeah like it is legitimately you know they have to buy them as much time as they can they're trying to turn off all you know what, what was it they said everything non-essential and you know one of them says you know what about the cloak and I've played enough StarCraft 1 that, yeah, cloaking is expensive, but also tactically extremely useful. And... Let's see... Yeah, um... Quite like, um... You know, Daisy's very happy to see Trip again. As, you know, she's, she's playing the part of the audience. They're so great to, to see him again, though. I don't know if we'll see him again after this episode, but, yeah, um, you know, big hug, and he's like, hey, person I don't recognize, you know, just, yeah, and, you know, and, and, uh, can we have a conversation, just the, the two of us, sure, and you and I can resume hugging later, <laughs> and, yeah, um, Gemma is still determined that she will save Leopold and, you know, Daisy has has basically reached the point where she's like, it's not, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to miss him too, but it's not going to happen. You know, clearly he's just, we're not going to be able to, to make that happen. And, and that actually later drives, you know, near, near the end of the episode when, or yeah, later in the episode, you know, she, um, Gemma, goes to, to see Alistair, and the, yeah, it's with, without talking to, to Daisy, because she knows Daisy's going to try to talk her out of it, maybe even, like, literally prevent her you know, either using her powers or talking someone else into helping prevent Gemma from going by pointing out how dangerous it is. And let's see, then we have the, um, uh, yeah, Hope has a great moment with, you know, she, yeah, Mac is, you know, trying to go home with, you know, taking Hope home because the you know they've there's other people who can do who can help the resistance now there's you know a lot of people in with the resistance now seemingly and yeah you know if it's safe he'd rather that the you know he and hope be at home he wants to keep her away from all of this and you know hope just goes off like the the um, just yeah you know saying the only reason you're you know you you're you're lucky that she you know she eventually got out of prison you put her in prison and you know and and 100% not surprised that Daisy would get along well with a kid with an attitude you know the thing of you know you, what was it? She kicked Madame Hydra's, and you know Al Alfonso stops her, and then you know Daisy encourages her, and Alfonso's like, "You're not being a very good influence right now." And I appreciate that you know Melinda, Melinda May is, you know, she says. It sounds like you need to be medicated to, to Coulson, considering that Mingo and used to be on ER. And 
I haven't seen very much of it. I've, I've been shown clips where she's like studying to become a doctor, so I don't know if she makes it, but yeah. How would you like to be reborn? Is it anything like Heroes Reborn? Because that really wasn't that impressive. And I like, <laughs> she would have made a terrible teen daughter. And yeah, legitimately, like, Gemma pointing a gun at Alistair, like, holy crap, I, I, because it's, it's this great middle ground of, like, you can understand where she's coming from, you know, you can, you can see how Gemma feels this could work, this play, though risky, could actually get her face to face with Leo and him not surrounded by guards, not armed, you know. But at the same time, it's extremely dangerous and, you know, ultimately it it doesn't go as badly as it could have. That could easily have been her who ended up dead in the scuffle. And, and you know, I suppose you could say ultimately... That is, you know, maybe maybe Leo wouldn't have gone with Radcliffe if Alistair hadn't died. But it, it's not like she, like Gemma knew that that would happen. Happened. Ha My tongue's not cooperating. What can I say? Not exactly what I want. And <laughs> Trip is annoyed that he apparently he didn't date any of the the women on um, you know the female agents of shield and yeah i i quite appreciate that even before the call like it's clear they're a little too close you know at first the distance between alistair and gemma is is fine but he takes a slight step forward because he can that's the thing you know he can he can sense that she's not, you know, she's not interested in shooting him. And that's the thing, you know, if someone points a gun at you and you feel confident that they're not, that they wouldn't want to fire it, they wouldn't want to shoot you, yeah, you know, again, risky, but there is a certain logic in what he says in, in attacking. And there's one point where Gemma is the one who takes a step a little too close. And the call is also great. This thing, you know, like basically Alistair is saying, you know, he's, he f believes that this is going to, he's going to end up dead here. And he wants to, to tell Leo, you know, I love you. And, you know, and, and yeah, Leo hears the, the, the fight and, and this, yeah. And the, the, yeah, the characters reach the, the place with the coordinates, but there's, there's this molten steel over it, you know, and it's not even like, you know, there's a, there's at least one robot down there, so they wouldn't even be alone if they just jumped in. I can't help but wonder if this was maybe at least part of why Daisy did not have her powers in the framework because, you know, Ada, like, figured, well, maybe, you know, that Daisy could remove the, the, yeah, and, and open the, the portal. Did someone who wrote this episode play at least one of the army men games by any chance because I can't help but note that that really come to think of it that was very reminiscent of one of those games at least I don't want to give away exactly which but yeah um, but but the <laughs> like you know the um, right yeah and then we see the you know Ophelia I guess is what I should be calling her now the getting a physical body because technically it doesn't really make sense to call that Ada anymore yeah Ophelia not to be confused with framework Ophelia or O Ophramorkia 
and it, yeah, we see the the body being being made by the machine, and yeah, the thing of you know, Alfonso makes a, a Bible reference, and then they yeah use one back, and he's like, they did not just use the Bible against me, and. <laughs> Colson is shot and it's like, this is oddly familiar. And yeah, uh, Colson does manage to, to go through and is okay. So yeah, the it's not, if you're shot in the frame, if you're wounded in the framework, you can come out alive. It's only if you full on die, which also, yeah, we, you know, Ophelia, was was injured but did not you know Ada was still alive in in the real world although when I saw that I th figured well maybe that's like there's some kind of special exemption for her since she her brain isn't the uh, a human brain maybe it only happens to human brains since we're also told that human brains can't handle the dark hold but her machine brain could now, then we have the, um, yeah, really, really gripping when Leo catches up to, to Gemma and prevents her from, from going. And, you know, she, yeah, he, he points out, you, you, you killed my father. You know, this girl murdered my father. And the, you know, she's like, I'm so sorry. That was, in retrospect, not my smartest decision. And, yeah, Leo gets really sadistic, you know, saying, get on your knees and beg. And, you know, when she won't get on her knees, he shoots her like, holy crap. It's really no wonder that he really is very distraught when he comes back out of the, the framework. And... Yeah, Radcliffe manages to to get Leo in, and I really appreciate. Like, I'm I'm not sure I was really expecting Radcliffe to really redeem himself again, but yeah, you know, he said he explains this was the only way I could get Leo back out of the framework. You know, I never wanted this. I, this this was never my intention. You know, and the only way that I could get Leo near the back door so we could get him through it is to tell him you know if you go to these coordinates you'll find you know so yeah you'll you'll find the the refugee the the killer of your father and yeah alfonso chooses not to go so maybe this is the last we've seen him i'm really going to miss him one of my favorite characters but yeah, you know, he doesn't want to be in a world where hope isn't. And... Yeah, Fitz is very much not okay. And it is also, like, it's a lot to absorb. And it's not like, you know, they're not... They can't really do anything to, to soften the blow. You know, as soon as he comes back out of the framework, he remembers everything. The, so, yeah. And, yeah, Ophelia makes an appearance and says, you know, I'm happy. This is what happiness feels like, you know. And again, like, hats off to Mallory Jansen. Fantastic performances. Because Ophelia in the flesh, Ophelia, is not quite like Agnes, you know. She <laughs> okay, so, so there's Ada, there's Agnes... There's framework Ophelia, you know, human body Ophelia, and the rest. Like, it's a lot. That's it's, And each of these is so distinctly different. Like, I believe that you could play a short clip of her in any of, you know, yeah, playing any of these. And even if you didn't remember, even if you didn't recognize the scene, you'd be able to tell which of these four characters she's playing. And, yeah, she teleports away. 
So that is, yeah, really looking forward to seeing where this goes. So there's, let's see, there are two episodes left of season four. Yeah, really, really psyched to, to see. And, and yeah, this might be the last we've seen of the framework. I think they used it quite well. I don't think that they overexposed it. And I can definitely see how that might have, yeah, if, if they pushed it for too much longer. And let's see. So, yeah, MDB trivia for this episode. This episode sees the return of Phil Coulson's voice, introducing the previously on sequence, which was replaced by Daisy Johnson's voice in the previous episodes. This episode does not feature an after credit scene. Instead, a clip from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was shown in the original airing. And let's see. Uh, right, and so yes, some some goofs incorrectly regarded as goofs. Ada materializes in the nude, but in a few moments she's wearing a robe. However, she could have kept one in printer room beforehand. Near the end, Ada has generated, and Fitz is between May and Ada. May, as a trained operative, needed only to move a few feet to have an angle to shoot Ada, but instead she just sat there. Likewise, Colson was adjacent to Fitz. Could have simply pushed him out of the way so May could shoot Ada, but uncharacteristically he did nothing. However, one could argue they didn't fully recover from framework and were still adapting to real world. I think that makes a lot of sense. You told her. It came up in conversation. How does the existence of an alternate reality come up in, in casual conversation? And... And, and yeah, I quite like <laughs> Gemma introducing herself to, to me. I know who you are. My squad's been hunting you the past week. Yes, I suppose that's true. How a little Pop-Tart like you evade capture. It's good to have you back. And... Let's see... I think that might be about it. So, yeah. Um, I should be able to do an episode tomorrow, but otherwise, the next video will be Thursday. What's with this team of yours? A hydra agent, a school teacher, a dad? Looks pretty bad news bears to me.